Hello, hello. Welcome everybody back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming and seeing me. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, you know, my story. And so uh, I felt it very important to share this story with you guys because um, stories kind of connect with people. They inspire people to make movements forward. And that's my heart and that's my goal for you guys is to, um, one, to find out who you are, what is your unique voice, um, what is your unique gift that you are here to give to others, you know what I'm saying? And so there were some common mental barriers that I started out with uh, when uh, I started in the process of entrepreneurship five years ago. One of them is that I do not like risk. You can ask my wife, I do not like risk, okay? Another one was the fear of failure, fear of, fa fear of failing. Mm -hmm. And then also I have a, and I'm a very analytical person, so a lot of times I get analysis paralysis which is basically I think too deep about some things and and don't recognize the simple things to get started on and just do that you know what I'm saying I get stuck I kind of, kind of get myself stuck and so that's what we're gonna kind of go through you know with my story and sharing this with you and I, I just pray that it benefits you and helps you and, and resonates with you so uh, let's go ahead and get into it so bottom line man when I started out I do not like risk you can ask my wife you know uh, that's why I went to school so that I could avoid risk you know what I'm saying, um, uh, University of North Texas, so amen, whoop, whoop. Uh, but specifically, how I was able to overcome being risk adverse, uh, as well as even my fear of failure, is that there's several different ways in order to start in the process of entrepreneurship. Uh, they only sell you one way, they only show you one way, it's like, hey, I'm all in, I'm leaving my job, I have this money saved up, I'm going all in. Yes, that's one way to do it, but like my dad told me and taught me that there's more than one way to skin a cat. You know, I know that's not good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but just there's more than one way to do do things. And so um, with that said, the route that I chose to take is that my wife had a passion for uh, catering and cooking and stuff like that, and she wanted an opportunity to do so while I still worked in corporate America. So I still had my corporate job. That was my way though, so that I can minimize risk but still allow my wife to you know, try out this, this, this idea that she wanted to try out. And so the opportunity came up with a friend of ours from church, said, hey, you know, we got this 4-H banquet, why don't you put in a bid for it? And so there was other people that were professional that put in bids and so they kind of shared with us you know, their template. We took that template and we, we, my wife came up with a menu and a format and everything and uh, hey, we got the job. That was our first our first um, catering job, uh, you know what I'm saying? And it's benefited us not only for the first time, but even beyond that. So my wife came up with the logo, Big and Little Bites, and you know she went through a company called Fiverr. If y'all looking for a cheap way to get some things done, but still quality, major quality, Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, man. Um, they're saying, they're saying, which I really do like is, endures we trust endures and so that was just so awesome so uh, and then I come to find out later on in the road about a few years down the road that my wife she works best when she's in pressure situations she gets the most stuff done and then she does awesome you know what I'm saying so basically with that said with me keeping my corporate job I was able to work through that you know um, the the fear of failure and also risk because it's just hey Spend, spending some money here. So thus, as we started to go through, we got to our two-year mark with that, and it just got overwhelming. We didn't really know how to manage people well. You know what I'm saying? Didn't have, you know, studied up on that and all that good stuff. And so uh, with our last event, it was just about to blow up, but we was exhausted. You know what I'm saying? It was time to make a switch. And so we ended up switching over to selling cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls were good, very you know, one dimensional, but you know, many different types of flavors that you could create. So it kind of worked best for us in me and my wife's capacity. Uh, so, but about four years in, uh, which was last year, uh, I had gotten to a point where with my job, there was three different things that was going on. One was my quirkiness and difference. You know, I was just different than the job. And then the second thing was I was very good at customer service. But I wasn't very good at the other end of like um, bringing in new money, keeping money, and um, also 
uh, just meeting the the regular daily the regular standards of the position. So I love the position that I had, and um, you know, when in what I was doing, I just wasn't meeting their standards, and it it was really eating at me. And then the third thing, which was the most important, is that one of my sons is you know. Um, you know, has issues and stuff like that. I'm just going to leave it like that. And so with, with that said, with those issues, it was time for me to be more home. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I just really felt that burden. When I was home, everything was good. But then when I wasn't home, as soon as I left, you know, to work, it, it was a struggle. It was a battle, you know, in that process. And I was just like, man, how am I going to ask my employer? Can I get more time off? But yet I'm not even meeting your standards. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I was like, dang it. So with that said, I kind of jumped ship. I left my job, of course, with some savings in the banks. I didn't just take off just like that. I had some savings in the bank, you know, in order to last us, you know, for a while. And so um, took a leap of faith, got out there and, you know, kind of went all into selling cinnamon rolls. And so that was last year. So we did that for about a year. And so, um, man, then every time my wife tried to go all in and build up the business, I would always like pump the brakes. I would always be the negative person say, well, well, this, no, this doesn't work because I didn't want her to go through with her dreams because I had a fear of losing money uh, and I wanted to keep as much money as I could. And so I kept saying to her, you know, like she'd come up with an idea. I was like, no, that wouldn't work because of this, 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 that. And I would, see, see the numbers. Look at the numbers. They, do, they don't add up. You know what I'm saying? Let's not do that. But I was basically really scared to go and move on to to move into that next venture, you know, with Sweet Rose to take that next step. And so, but also with Sweet Rose, it was so cool too as well is that we got a chance to uh, connect with some um, uh, six figure uh, married entrepreneur coaches called Marriedpreneur Life uh, and just great individuals. They took us through a six month course teaching us everything from marketing, target audience, messaging, online presence, offline presence, all types of stuff that would help us benefit in this, you know, and, and create and generate more income. And even being uncomfortable, answering some questions like, man, is my product worth it, you know, and how to inch up your prices, also how to take you from being thinking like an employee and moving you to an employer mindset. And so it was so key and needed that we need those people and it was just preparation for the journey. So fast forward to now, um, uh, man, it's been a great journey. I'm so excited about it. And I, I just want to say this, my wife, um, and I want to say this publicly, my beautiful black queen, uh, Monique Stroud, she uh, was the brains of the operation. I may be the face and out front, but she thought of all the recipes. She thought of, you know, even with uh, sweet rolls, she, you know, she, every time I would go out to the market, do my thing, make sales, sell out, she'd always, when I came home, wait for me and be like, hey, how'd it go? What did they say? Tell me more. And she's always tweaking recipes. And so I just wanted to say that, man, she was the brains behind the operation. And so I'm so glad that I got into entrepreneurship. So I pray that some part of what I said resonates with with your story, whether it resonates with your struggles or even your mental barriers that you need to break through. But whatever it is, you can do it. You can start with risk adverse, um, risk adverse or less risk uh, in entrepreneurship, just trying something out and seeing if it will work. So that's my encouragement to you. And so um, if you have any questions, leave the comments below or even share what is one thing that kind of helped you in this process of me sharing. But with that said, man, there will be some more content coming every Monday to help you in your entrepreneur journey. And if it, even not in your entrepreneur journey, just figuring out what is your unique gift and your voice in order to give to the world because others need you. They will only trust and buy from you. So that's it for this episode, man. I look forward to sharing more. Um, and uh, hey, be blessed. Subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you later. Peace.